All right, let's talk about functions in this video. So I'm going to delete everything and just define a simple function and I'm going to call it get age. So we don't have any parameter at the moment and we just want to return a number. So this is a simple JavaScript function and we don't have any type assignment. But if we hover over get age, you notice the return type is automatically inferred to number because we are returning a number. If I change this to a string like this, you can see it is now set to a string. So this is the first thing about functions and defining the return type. After the parentheses, we can have a colon and then the type. So if I say colon number and then I return a string, then I will have an error here because the return type is not correct. If I change this to a number, of course it works. So that is how to define a return type of a function in TypeScript. Now let's say we have a function with parameters. So I want to have another function. I want to call it add nums. We will accept a and b and we will have a return type of number. So we want to return a plus b. Now we are expecting this a and b to be a number, but you can see TypeScript is complaining and saying these parameters has implicitly the any type. And that's because we are not telling what are these a and b. So we can't leave them like this. We need to specify a type for our functions parameters. And just like any other variable, in order to define a type for function parameters, we can just say colon and the type of that parameter. Now, if I say the second one is a string, then again, you can see I have a problem. I'm putting this A and B together, which one of them is a string. So this is going to be a string. If I change this to a string, then the error is gone. Because what we are doing here with a number and a string, we are concatenating these two things together and they become one string. So I want to have a number. That means this second parameter must be a number as well. Now, in order to use this, of course, we can call that function. And now it is expecting A and B, which both of them are number and the return type is number. So if I say two and three, we will, of course, have five. Now, let's say I just want to log the result into the console instead of returning something. So I'm going to delete this one. And instead of this return value, I want to say log into the console A plus B. So doing this again gives me another error because the function is expecting to return a number, but we are not returning anything at all. So the return is void. And if we hover over the error, we can see the problem. A function whose declared type is neither undefined, void, or any must return a value. So in this case, we don't have any return and we need to change the return type to void. Now, if I call that add nums, which is expecting two numbers. I can say, for example, three and two, and this should give us five into the console. So back to our project, if we run our app.js with node, we get five in the console. That means it's working. But if I turn one of these arguments into a string or anything other than a number, then again, we have an error. This is normally how you would define your functions in TypeScript. You will have parameters with different types or same type and your return type. And if you make a mistake, TypeScript will complain about the process. So if I again return A plus B, which is a number, again, this is going to complain because I am returning void, which is now should be a number. So again, I can change this to a number and that works. Now, let's say you want to have optional parameters in your function. Now, A and B are required for our function. But let's say we have a C parameter that is not required. So if the user provides it, then we'll use it. Otherwise, we don't. In order to make this optional, just like in objects and interfaces, we can just provide a question mark after the name. So you can see if I take out the question mark, this function down here is complaining about missing argument. But if I add this question mark, then it's fine. And we are just returning A and B. Now, in order to add this parameter, into our calculation, we can add parentheses and say, if C has a value, then just use that or use zero. So if the user provides something, then we will have the number. Otherwise, we will just use zero. So in this case, this will give us five. But if I duplicate this and add another number, this will give me seven. And let's just log this into the console, both of them like this and see what we get. So again, back to terminal, I'm going to run that app.js, we get five and seven. So you can have optional parameters in your function and then handle that in the body of your function the way you want.
We can also have default values for our parameters. For example, another approach to this function could be adding a default value for this C. So we don't want to make this nullable anymore. We want to say that we will have a C parameter, but if the user doesn't include anything, we will set the value of that to zero just by adding the assignment operator and the value right after the type. Then down here, we don't need to do this anymore. We can just say C. So if there is a number, then we will add that to A and B. Otherwise, we will just use zero. So these logs should give us again five and seven. Back to terminal. If we run that command again, we get the same output. So this is how we can have default values in our function parameters. We can also use the rest operator in our function parameters if we don't know how many arguments are going to be passed into our function. So I'm going to delete all these parameters and just add three dots. That is the spread operator in JavaScript and give it a name. Let's call it nums. And I want to set the type of these nums to number. So again, using colon and then provide the brackets because we are using the spread operator and this operator in JavaScript spreads an array into individual values. So we are defining an array of numbers and we are calling it nums, but then we are spreading it so that we can pass individual values and not an array. So this way I can have as many values as I want. And then I say, I want to return a number. So for example, I want to grab all the arguments that we pass into our function and add them together. And for that, we can use the reduce function in JavaScript. So I can say nums reduce, and this will take a callback function and two parameters. One is the previous iteration and then the current iteration. So I'm going to call it priv and cur, and then use the arrow function. And we just want to add the previous iteration to the current one. And then we can also pass the initial value that is going to be zero. So for example, in this case, it is going to be three plus two. So it's going to be five. In this case, it's going to be three plus two, that is five plus two, that is seven. And let's just have another one. And I'm just going to add random numbers here and format my code and see what we get. So again, this reduce function will take all these values and add them together. And then we are returning it. So it's going to be a number. So let's go back and see what we get in the terminal. If we run that command again, we get five and seven, but also the total number of these arguments that I used here. So that is 4,820. And that's all about functions. So we can have the parameters types as well as the return type. So we will avoid errors in our code when we are developing.